In this video, we are going to start building out a content machine that pushes out 200, 300, 400 pieces of content per week for us on autopilot. This video is going to be an overview of exactly what to expect, why we should do it, how to get started, and anything else that you need to start creating content and be everywhere without having to waste time, energy, and effort. Hi, my name is Alston Godbolt and I teach platform proof monetization. I show you step by step how you can make money online without having to worry about unpredictable and unstable algorithms. So, and if you want to be added to the globe, comment down below with your city, state, zip code, province, or country, and I'll get you pinned. As you can see here, I want to show you step by step how to build a content empire with AI agents. And so basically this is what it's going to look like. We are going to download at a high level, we are going to download saved videos from a Google Drive folder, then we're going to upload them into Amazon Web Services S3, then we're going to transcribe them, and we're going to talk about all of this more in detail, but you should get an understanding of a high level, why we're doing it this way, and how to repurpose your current content so that you're not having to overthink and rethink. Anyway, we are going to get that transcription, then we're going to summarize it, and then we're going to put it in an air table so that we can start manipulating it and doing other things. So as you can see here, we are going to use an AI agent or a series of agents in order to do these things. We're going to watch for new files. The way that I've got it set up currently is that whenever I upload a TikTok video, for example, that video automatically gets saved or downloaded to a Google Drive folder. Because of that, I can trigger this automation that you see on the screen and it allows me to essentially start the process of being everywhere. I can create text posts, images, I can do threads, I can do all, all of this stuff without me having to invest a lot of time. And the best part about this is that you can get started with all of this without being coding, without being a coder. You don't need a ton of knowledge. You just really need to have a want to in order to learn how to do this stuff and then you can be successful. You need a little bit of consistency and persistence because if this is brand new to you, it's gonna frustrate you in the very beginning. So let's go ahead and talk about quickly why you should do this. Why is this important? This is going to save time instead of manually after you upload to TikTok, then going over to YouTube and then Facebook and then Instagram, that's gonna save you time. That's gonna save you money. You no longer have to hire an expensive team or a team of people in order to do this. You won't have to use like a buffer platform in order to do this. What will help make you money if you're in the, and hopefully you're the only reason why you're creating content is to, is to make money. This will make you money. This will allow you to be everywhere. You know, it, it'll allow you to be on TikTok and Instagram and LinkedIn and Pinterest and everywhere else, essentially uh, to get in front of the people that are, are needing your product or service. This is gonna help you avoid frustration. One of the best parts of setting up an AI agent is you do this once, and it's going to work for you on autopilot until obviously something breaks. And again, I, I say this in all every one of my videos. People will buy stuff from you if you save them time, save them money, help them make more money, or avoid frustration. And then, like I said, you create it once, and then you never have to think about it again, which is really cool. And I've seen a bunch of places. People like Gary Vandertruck and Alex Hermosi and really the top creators, they're making like 200 pieces of content per week but they've got a team of people behind them. They've got an expensive team. And with AI agents and, and setting up automations, you don't need to do that anymore. So let's talk about how and how can we do this, okay? So just to give you some numbers and, and why you should be excited and at least thinking about this strategically. Facebook has over 3 billion active users every single month. YouTube 2.5, Instagram 2 billion, TikTok 1.6, Snapchat 800, Twitter 600, Pinterest 470 million, Threads 200 million. And why is that important? And combined, that's over 11 billion people, that, uh, monthly users. That's important because your audience, the people that are going to buy from you, are on these platforms. Regardless of your age, regardless of your niche, they're there. And they're looking for a product or service. They, they might not know it yet, but they, you have something that you can give them in exchange for money. And the other thing you got to realize is that your customers aren't all in one place, right? Your customers aren't all on Facebook. Some of them spend a little bit of time on Facebook, but most of their time might be on Snapchat. So you want to be where they are and you want to be what's called omnipresent, just be everywhere. All right. So uh, just did some quick math. 0.01% 
of 11 billion is 1.117 million users. And then if you only want to get 100,000 impressions or show up in front of 100,000 people per month, that's only 0.0009%, okay? That's really important because if you, let's say your goal is to make 10K per month, you don't need a lot of traction in all of these different places, especially if you're showing up omnipresent, right? And now because we can do this, we can create audio content, visual, so like images, and even text content on autopilot for every single platform. Now quickly, let's go ahead and talk about the tools that we need. We, I, I was using Make for a while. I switched over to N8N. I think it's a little bit more powerful. Um, it does require a little bit more of a learning curve, but that's okay. Then we're going to use Google Drive to download and upload uh, Im uh, videos. We're going to use Amazon Web Services or AWS. A fun fact about AWS is, A, I was AWS certified. I used to have the certification somewhere around here. But more importantly, AWS is the backbone of the internet. Between all of the data, data centers that are out there, they've got government, government contracts that a lot of people don't know about. AWS is incredibly powerful and you're probably using it and you don't even realize it. For example, a few years ago, my um, AWS went down for a time and I couldn't log into my, my, school, my, my school system. It's because the backbone of the internet's AWS and, and a lot of people don't realize it. Anyway, we're going to use AWS and not Whisper. There's a reason why and I'll talk about it in just a moment. We're going to use OpenAI to help summarize and then a Airtable to store it. So uh, let's talk about some use cases. Two very important ones, create unlimited content. So if you are a content creator and you want to expand your reach and potentially make more money, you can, this is a great use case. But more importantly, let's say you're not a content creator. Uh, let's say you want to work with content creators or small businesses. You want to remain in the background. You could create a service. And the way that I create these different AI agents, I do it what's called um, I, modularization. Okay, if you've seen AI agents before, some people, and I'll talk more about modularization in just a second, some people will create AI agents where the workflow is doing 400 things. And I think that's wrong, and I'll talk about it in just a moment. What I want you to do is I want you to create workflows that solve a specific task. It has one job. You literally have one job. Think about it if you worked in an office. Jan from accounting only works on accounts receivable. She doesn't do accounts receivable, and then she doesn't do accounts payable, then data entry, and then she's not loading the, the, the boxes on, on the shipping dock. Jan only does accounts receivable. She might not do it great, but she's, that's her, her only responsibility. And that's how I want you to think about building your AI agents. Don't build these huge, massive things. Um, I'll talk about more in just a moment. I'll get off my, my soapbox with that. But uh, what you can do is you can sell this service to others. And the way that I envision it is you could work with small businesses or content creators, and then you can offer different packages. So for package one, you offer three repurposing services. So they can pick Instagram and LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, the, the second level, they can pick seven different uh, social media platforms. And then on the, the, the highest level, they could do 20, okay? And if you build it out the way that I suggest that you build it out, you can quickly repurpose, you can plug and play and be interchangeable. Anyway, um, I'm actually, I don't know that I'm going to give this blueprint away. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you want it. Anyway, quick note about mod modularization. This is, something, this is something really important to me. And you want to, you want to modularize your, your programming, your workflows, your code. And as I elaborated a little bit earlier, Jan from accounting only does accounting. She doesn't, she's not responsible for getting the CEO coffee. And an another thing that you want to consider is that when you build out these huge workflows, I do seven, eight, ten different tasks. If one thing breaks early on in the chain, it can shut down your entire system. And so you want to have these independent workflows that won't break when you are when something else breaks. Let's say a credential expires, a token expires. That's more technical. But let's say a token expires. You don't want that to shut down your entire operation. So build out small 
their functions basically, but sp build out small workflows that do a specific task, and but then you can call those workflows or uh, store the data somewhere that you can go get it. Anyway, um, as it says there, modularization prevents mass failures. It's quickly, easily repurposed. So let's say this week I'm starting a business on dog training. Next week I want to start a business on basket weaving. I can quickly repurpose what I need, pull out what I need, and, and get rid of what I don't. So without further ado, uh, again, that's something that's really important to me. Let's go ahead and talk about how this works. As I mentioned, what this does is it actually, the Google Drive, it checks Google, the Google Drive folder, every 20 minutes. It's constantly, it's called polling. So it's going back and forth and saying, is there a new file? Is there a new file? Is there a new file every 20 minutes? And when it finds that file, it goes and downloads the file, as you can see here. It, it downloads that, that new file. And then once it downloads that file, it uploads it to AWS or Amazon Web Services S3. Now, the reason why we have to do it this way is because we're going to use AWS to transcribe this. And the reason why I'm going with AWS versus uh, Whisper, OpenAI Whisper, which is really important, uh, which a lot of people use. A lot of people use OpenAI Whisper. I, I used to use it, but... The problem is, is there's a constraint there. There's a 25, I think, megabyte or gigabyte limit as to what you can upload into Whisper. Excuse me. There is a, a there's a limit to what you can upload into Whisper. And so if you go that route, then you've got to figure out a way to extract the the audio from the video, the, which adds more steps and adds more complexity. What I found through a little bit of research AWS transcribe, you can put in up to like a four hour video without any issue. A lot of my videos are like 30 minutes long, but you want to make sure that that, that there's a, a buffer there so that there's no issue. Anyway, after we create the transcription, as you can see here, the next step is to actually get the transcription. And with AWS and with all services, really, it doesn't happen instantly. And so the way that we have this set up, and I, I think this is really cool, is that under settings, it's going to try every 5,000 milliseconds. It's going to try five times. And so it's going to keep looping through, and you can actually change that number. You could change it to like 20 if you wanted to, or you could change the, the delay time, the, the, the wait time. You could change it to, I could put like a 10 here, and then click save. And now, depending on the size, it's going to just keep checking, keep checking, keep checking. And then the next step to this, you can summarize. And here I'm using, I'm using actually OpenAI's chat model to summarize this. And this is a really cool built-in function inside of N8N. You just plug it in, you send it the, the, the transcription, it gives you the, the summary, and then you can take that summary and you can make other content. So maybe I wanna make a TikTok, or excuse me, maybe I wanna make an, a Twitter thread based on it. Now I have that ability. And what's even cool about the summarization is it actually allows you to load data in. So let's say I've uploaded a one hour YouTube video. If you don't have this data loader and this character splitter, the summarization, the summarization chain will not work. It'll break because it's too much data, too much information. But because of this built-in feature, you can actually chunk it you can you can um, <laughs> chunk it you can actually send pieces of the text and it still comes out pretty good so this one i've got the chunk size at a thousand and so it's going to keep through looping through once it gets to a thousand it's going to create a new chunk or or a new block a new document we'll say for it to be summarized and then it brings it all together makes it a summary and then i can just easily put that into an air table as you can see here and now what's really cool about this air table is it gives me the title it gives me the complete transcript you can see there and then it gives me the summary so from here i can now take the summary and i could create a blog post from it i could create maybe an instagram image or a text post or even here on linkedin i envision that i can take this one piece of content and turn it into one blog post maybe a Substack post to get more attention, more eyeballs, I could maybe turn it into 
in addition to a Instagram reel, I can turn it into an image that I post on Instagram natively for image and that would be a separate workflow. For LinkedIn, I can upload the video, I can create a text post and then even an image post once again just for LinkedIn. So if you if you think about this, one piece of content could go from one three you know, we're talking about like 20, 30, 40 pieces of content just from one video. And then if we multiply that, we do that three times a day, that's 120. We multiply that over seven days. You're looking at like a thousand pieces of content and you're doing very little of the work, which I think is, is, is pretty cool. And so this is a really simple, this is a really simple AI agent that you can put together. Uh, the best part about, I think N8, N8N and AI agents is that you can essentially just kind of share these and just plug and play. So what I'll do is I'll actually download this and I'll put it inside of um, inside of the video. It'll be linked in the description. So if you want it, just go ahead and download it. Uh, the other only other thing that I would recommend, and I've got a note here for myself to add in a little bit later, is to actually delete the files that show up. And the way that I save the files to make sure that they are unique is I actually save them based on the ID that is assigned in Google Drive. And so the last thing that I would want to do is I'd want to delete the file that is in S3. Let me see if I can bring up the S3 here. So with an S3, you've got to create buckets. Buckets are basically like folders. Let me see, general purpose buckets. All right, so, and so if we look at this, this is my S3 bucket. And the way that this works is it gets the file from it gets the file from Google Drive and then it stores it here. Once it transcribes, it also stores it back here again. And so, you know, you've got to pay for the the storage in S3. And so if you want to keep your storage costs down, I'm going to recommend that at the end of your workflow, you delete your files. You're going to have you're going to have copies of them inside of your Airtable anyway. So I would just add in right here, delete file and then delete transcription. And then this one is, is perfect. This one's done. But I mean, what's really exciting about this and I keep iterating it because as a content creator, one of the biggest challenges is trying to be everywhere. And if you're trying to be everywhere, you've got two choices. You can spend time or you can spend money to be everywhere. And this is actually probably the happy medium. I will warn you that AWS is more expensive than Whisper. It's not so much more expensive that it's going to be really, really noticeable. And the only other thing that I would say is I am hosting this on, it's called NHN. Um, and the reason why I do this is so that it can run 24 hours a day. But yeah, if you want to watch me build out this uh, content empire, this content machine, make sure that you like, comment, follow, share, subscribe. If you have questions about getting started with AI agents, definitely comment them down below and I would be happy to help you. Well, thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.